Hello. Hello everybody, before this video begins, we're gonna talk about something real quick. I'm doing a giveaway for 35,000 subscribers. We have to hit 35,000 subscribers by July 31st at 11.59 p.m. or the giveaway won't happen. We're shooting for 35,000 subscribers, so if you wanna win a Sideshow it's a collectible, go down below and subscribe, smash that like button, and share, and enjoy the video. Welcome back to the Space School Log, otherwise known as PPSW, your favorite hangout place. Today we're back with another Star Wars story. Today we're going to see what would have happened had Obi-Wan Kenobi saved Anakin Skywalker on Mustafar. Would Obi-Wan be able to bring his fallen apprentice off the planet before the Dark Lord and Sith arrived? Or would Obi-Wan have to face Sidious alone as he tried to escape the planet with his Padawan? Before we begin this video, let's smash that like button and shoot for 2,000 likes in the first 24 hours. And I release, what if Sidious raised Anakin? This is a video you definitely don't want to miss. Also, we're going for 50,000 subscribers so join the space call if you be a part of our incredible journey here together if you have ideas for videos let me down below i do read our comments but i do do crossovers and one last thing if you want to support the channel check out the patreon twitch and the discord special shout out to george story benjamin wells gord and chancellor B. lauren sanders for being grand tier supporters and jay hoffman icy raptor and war pigman 308 as massive tier supporters on our patreon thank you all for supporting the channel so 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 much you are help funding massive projects in the future if you want to learn how to win a free sideshow collectible watch the end of the video and i will tell you how our story begins on the fiery abyss of most Far. Anakin Skywalker has just lost his duel to Obi-Wan. He's lying on the banks of a lava river, looking up at his former master. Obi-Wan looks down as tears fill his eyes. He doesn't know what to say. It was just months prior when he told his apprentice that the day would never come for him to worry about Anakin being a failure to him. Obi-Wan thought so wrong. Obi-Wan never thought Anakin would fall so far from grace. The devil took the Jedi's messiah and dragged him down into the depths of hell. Explosions rang out across the skies of Mustafar as Obi-Wan looked at Anakin. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy the Sith, not join them! Bring balance to the Force, not leave it in darkness! Anakin looked at Obi-Wan as he groaned in pain. He was such a failure. The Sith were meant to be more powerful. He was meant to be the most powerful being in the galaxy, and he just lost to his master. Anakin had been taught by Obi-Wan for 13 years. He should have been able to best Obi-Wan in combat. His power had grown exponentially. Anakin wiped out the entire Jedi Temple by himself with the aid of the 501st. He was all-powerful, and there was no force in the galaxy, inside of Anakin's mind, that could stop him. He had told Padme that he could literally overthrow the Emperor himself. Anakin would have no issue with killing Palpatine in his mind. But maybe, just maybe, he overestimated his own power. Anakin's life flashed before his eyes as he thought back to a session his master taught him. It was inside of a beautiful viewing room inside of the Jedi Temple. Anakin and Obi-Wan sparred with one another as they fought, colliding blades back and forth. Obi-Wan lost his lightsaber to Anakin, and then somehow, Anakin was the one who lost the duel. Obi-Wan taught Anakin how to beat him, and Anakin didn't do it. Hatred filled Anakin's eyes as they pierced with yellow as he tried to scream at his master. The dark side was powerful and it was winning. Anakin's memories flashed more and more. He thought of teaching he received from his master. There were so many pleasant memories, but there was also a reason why Anakin was here. It was because of Obi-Wan's betrayal. Obi-Wan turned Padme against him, and this, was an, an, and this in his mind was an irrefutable truth. Anakin cried out in pain, but he couldn't muster the words to say it. Obi-Wan looked down as he told Anakin, You were my brother, Anakin! I loved you! The second Obi-Wan said that Anakin's legs caught on fire. Obi-Wan watched as the pain consumed his apprentice. He couldn't. There was no way he could just let this happen. Sure, Anakin just tried to kill him, but it was his brother. It was the boy he promised to train, the boy he promised to raise into the Jedi that he was now. All the memories of Anakin smiling and being the good, kind, and caring man that he was resurfaced in Obi-Wan's mind as he saw the fire slowly creep up the little bit of legs that Anakin had left. Obi-Wan couldn't watch this. He slid down the banks as he used the force to extinguish the fire on Anakin's legs. Anakin looked at Obi-Wan with pure hatred in his eyes. Obi-Wan reached his hand under Anakin's head and pulled him up into his lap. Red and yellow glared into the blue eyes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. As he looked down at his fallen apprentice, Anakin swung his metallic arm around as he was trying to fight back. He was so pissed that the amount of pain in his body was sending copious amounts of adrenaline throughout him. He wasn't thinking clearly. Obi-Wan looked down at his apprentice. 
Anakin's unhinged behavior was slowing down as he realized where he was. Obi-Wan placed his hand on his apprentice's chest as he looked at the top of the lava banks. He then closed his eyes as Anakin tried to throw his metallic hand at Obi-Wan's neck. Obi-Wan didn't budge. He lightly used his essence to calm Anakin's anger. Obi-Wan was able to relax Anakin enough to where he wouldn't try to kill him every three seconds. I'm sorry, Anakin, for everything. For Ahsoka, for the council, for the lies. I'm sorry for failing you. Anakin leaned his head back as he groaned in pain. Obi-Wan never truly wanted it to come to this. He held Anakin's metallic hand as his apprentice looked at him. He was still the scared little boy he met 13 years ago. The child that was afraid of what would happen to him next. Anakin didn't want to lose Padme. She was the only one that he ever cared about. Anakin muttered the words, Obi Wan. Anakin, don't speak. I'll get you taken care of. Obi Wan, please don't let Padme die. Neither of you are. We're going to fix this. We should have been what you needed. We should have taken care of what your emotions told you. I should have been more open about Satine with you. I should have guided you. I'm not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't fail me. I failed you. Anakin's eyes lost their golden tint as they returned to their natural color. A tear slid from Anakin's eye as he looked at Obi-Wan, who was using all of his restraint to keep himself together. Obi-Wan felt a disturbance in the Force, and it was growing. Evil, pure evil power was making its way to Mustafar. The devil himself was returning into the depths of hell to retrieve the fallen angel. Obi-Wan wrapped his arms around Anakin. Let's get you and Padme somewhere safe. I feel an evil presence approaching. Obi-Wan used the force to calm Anakin's mind and put him to sleep as he picked up his former student and carried him up the banks. Obi-Wan used the force to pull Anakin's lightsaber and put it to his side. Obi-Wan could feel the darkness getting closer and closer as he began to pick up speed. Obi-Wan was already extremely tired. Fighting Anakin took everything, almost everything he had within him, and he had to get Anakin back inside of the ship, as well as Padme. Luckily for Obi-Wan, Anakin so happened to be a lot lighter, missing all of his limbs. Obi-Wan sped his way across the sulfur as his boots slipped in the ash. He kept his feet steady as he breathed heavily and he focused heavily on that breath. As he ran around and found his way to the landing bay platform where the Naboo starship was waiting. Obi-Wan saw that Padme was missing. His heart dropped to the bottom of his back. He then saw C-3PO walking out of the ship to tell him that he got the senator inside of the ship. The dark shadow of the Emperor's shuttle cascaded through the sky of fire as Obi-Wan told 3PO to get to the cockpit and take off with the ship. Obi-Wan ran inside of the ship and found a place to put Anakin down. He was still breathing steadily. Sidious walked out of his shuttle, noticing the Naboo starship. He knew something was off, as he told his men, Track that ship immediately. Right away, sir. The engines primed as Obi-Wan ran from Padme's ship to the ship's ramp to make sure that everything was clear. As he slid across the floors, he saw Sidious from afar walking slowly towards the ship, as the two clones ran at him. Obi-Wan watched as the ramp closed and 3PO took the ship out into orbit. Obi-Wan ran to the cockpit as he took a hold of the ship's as he whipped the ship from right to left, as he turned the ship hard, jolting Sleep-Sleepio from his seat, as he pushed the ship back around and full throttled the engines. Obi-Wan pushed the ship into space as he hit the hyperdrive as the ship entered hyperspace. Sidious growled as he demanded, Find that ship now. We need to stop the Jedi insurgents before they ruin all of our plans. Yes, sir. Obi-Wan leaned back as he turned around and walked out to find Padme and Anakin. They were both next to each other separated but close as they could be. Obi-Wan walked into the room and checked on the two of them. They were both alright. There was nothing that could be done until they reached Polis Masa. Obi-Wan fell down against the wall as he leaned his head back against it. There was so much for him to emotionally unpack about what had just encountered and what he had just experienced. The fight entirely was traumatic, but it seemed as if Anakin didn't fully blame Obi-Wan for what had happened. But, much like Anakin, with Ahsoka, Obi-Wan couldn't help but feel guilty for failing teaching Anakin. Obi-Wan held his head in his hands as he looked at the floor beneath him. He wasn't particularly close to Padme, but the two of them had history that all went all the way back to Naboo. And Anakin was a child that was forced into his care by the unfortunate death of his master, Qui-Gon. Obi-Wan went through his memories as the silence of hyperspace filled his mind. He felt alone. Everything he lost, his master, his love, his friends, his order, nothing hurt his heart more like failing his student. Of course, Anakin said what he said, but 
Obi-Wan understood fully in this moment what Anakin was going through when Ahsoka left the Order. Except Ahsoka didn't kill younglings and destroy everything he loved. That role was reserved for Anakin. Obi-Wan thought back on all the wrongs he had done. He knew he had mistakes, what Master didn't, but the mistakes were maybe just too significant. Obi-Wan should have done more. The entire history of the relationship flashed through his mind as he felt a rough hand land on his arm. Obi-Wan looked over as he wiped tears away from his face. He looked at Anakin, as Anakin looked like he was trying to get Padme's attention. Save your strength. She's okay. You both will be okay. And so will your child. Anakin thought back to his dreams where he heard Obi-Wan say the same thing to Padme when Obi-Wan told Padme to save her strength. Those dreams weren't true. They couldn't be possibly true, especially because Obi-Wan was speaking to Anakin, not to Padme. Anakin was so concerned over Padme's pregnancy that his thoughts led him down this dark path. It felt like manipulation by somebody else, and that someone would be Palpatine himself. Because it was more than apparent at this moment that Obi-Wan would do anything for Anakin. He already did by hiding Anakin and Padme's relationship while being on the High Council. Anakin looked at his former master as Obi-Wan moved his hand to grab Anakin's, as he lifted Anakin's hand back over to the bed and let it down slightly. Obi-Wan looked at his student. Anakin had terror written across his face. Obi-Wan moved over next to his apprentice and grabbed his hand with both of his own. He held it tightly, as if Anakin could feel it through the metallic limbs. The ability to hold his children with his own hands were taken from him. Sure, he'd be able to get metallic replacements, but that was something Anakin would have to live with now. Obi-Wan took something that was so precious from him. Obi-Wan tried to forgive himself for what he did and why he had to do it. Obi-Wan knew Anakin would fall for the high ground. It was basic to Anakin's arrogance, thinking he could best something as simple as a slight incline. Obi-Wan never wanted to do it, but he had to. Now he had to live with it. Obi-Wan's emotions were so misconstrued, he felt the pain and suffering inside of his apprentice as he looked at him. Obi-Wan was holding his hand. He had nothing to say. His lips trembled, but not a word came out. Anakin's eyes were still full of fear. So much had gone wrong, and even Anakin felt it before Padme's ship arrived. Anakin cried alone after he slaughtered so many. No matter how powerful Vader was, Anakin was always in there. The little slave child from Tatooine was always going to be in there, because he was always good. Obi-Wan didn't know how much further Vader could have gone, but he did know that Anakin was back. While Anakin was still definitely angry at Obi-Wan, the biggest concern to him was Padme. Anakin cared about Padme more than anything, even more than revenge. And in his anger, he almost killed her. Obi-Wan aggravated Anakin. Had he not shown, maybe, just maybe Anakin would have come down naturally. Obi-Wan knew that he couldn't just blame Yoda, but Yoda forcing him to fight Anakin did lead to this. There was always good in Anakin's heart, but he needed to find it, and the best way to find it was always always through Padme. Obi-Wan thought back on his relationship. He helped keep a secret. Anakin and Padme were an obvious relationship. It was obvious ever since Geonosis. Obi-Wan couldn't figure out how no one else ever saw it, but Anakin and his little secret had it covered up. All that Obi-Wan cared about was the fact that Padme made Anakin happy. Obi-Wan just wanted Anakin to be happy, and that's what Padme was for him a way into life of happiness. Obi-Wan looked at Anakin as the child he raised fell asleep with the clamp on Obi-Wan's hand. Obi-Wan moved back down to the floor gently as he held Anakin's metallic hand without waking the young man. It would take time, but the Naboo starship would land on Polis Massa. Yoda and Bail were already there, and when Obi-Wan came running out of the ship with Padme in his arms, he told Bail that Anakin was in there too. Bail's face had shock written all over it. He couldn't believe it. He obviously didn't know if Obi-Wan could kill Anakin, but why would he bring him here? To pull us Masa, it was an unbelievable decision by Obi-Wan. C-3PO came down from the ramp carrying his maker. Anakin was extremely weak as he lodged his only hand on the C-3PO's shoulder. He felt like he was constantly falling. 3PO followed Obi-Wan down the hallway as the medical droids began to appear. There was a split room divided by a hallway. There was a room on one side and the room on another side. Yoda and Bale stood in the middle as Obi-Wan moved side to side, checking on both Padme and Anakin. Padme lay on her bed with her eyes closed as medical droids got to work immediately. Padme wasn't dying, but her heart had a very clearly unstable beat. She awoke as Obi-Wan, who was in the room with Anakin, ran over to make sure that she was alright. 
Obi-Wan could see it in her eyes as he spoke to her before she had the chance to. Don't worry. He's being taken care of. Anakin's alright. Padme fell back down in a slump as the medical bay droids informed Obi-Wan that they needed to begin their work. Obi-Wan approved, though he was so fixated on Padme and her giving birth, he didn't realize it meant for the both medical droid teams to work on both patients. The medical droids would sedate Anakin and begin to work on adding new limbs to his body. Obi-Wan was in Padme's bay as he was taking care of her and assisting her with the birthing process. The medical droid teams worked as fast and then a loud boom was heard. Bail Organa said he would have his guard check it out. The order on guard would run towards the landing platform and immediately a firefight would ensue. Clone trippers from the chorus on guard would open fire on the order on guard. They were currently outmatched, but they held their own as the clone troopers made a push into the medical center. Yoda informed Bail that he would protect them as Obi-Wan took Padme's children one by one as he handed Luke and Leia over to Bail Organa as he got the children out of there as fast as he could. Obi-Wan informed the medical droid team that they needed to get Padme out of there too. The droids immediately began to unscrew the table so that they could lift Padme out of the room. The sound of blaster fire heightened as the sound of a lightsaber swinging filled the hallway. The clones could be heard screaming as the sounds of a lightsaber whisked through the corridors. The Alderaan guard could be seen running back towards the bay as their shots fired down the hallways. Medical droids and people in the hallway were gunned down as Yoda was sent flying across the hallway by Darth Sidious. Yoda slammed into the wall and was immediately knocked out. Obi-Wan got the medical team to push Padme into the hallway as Obi-Wan ignited his lightsaber. The Alderaan guard began shooting back as Obi-Wan saw Sidious down the hallway staring at him. The yellow eyes of the devil himself looked down at Kenobi as the Coruscant guard opened fire. Obi-Wan moved his lightsaber from side to side as he blocked blaster bolts at the clones, killing some and knocking others down. Obi-Wan was incredibly talented with Form 3 as he worked side to side defending himself. Sidious growled from down the hallway as he watched Obi-Wan defend Padme. Sidious had no idea where Anakin was, he just knew that he was still alive. But where? He was somewhere in the building, Sidious didn't really know. So Sidious decided he would allow the clones to push against Kenobi until he made a fool out of the Jedi Master who said Sith Lords was his speciality. Obi-Wan moved with his blade flawlessly from side to side as he knocked all the clones in the hallway off their feet. Obi-Wan then faced down Sidious as Kenobi saw Master Yoda still unconscious on the floor next to him. Obi-Wan tried to get the guard to move the bed, but Padme was still not moving. The bed was unable to be moved. Obi-Wan needed to focus on the Sith Lord that was coming towards him as lightning rang out from his fingertips as it electrocuted the guards around Kenobi, sending them back into the walls. Obi-Wan placed his hand behind him as he tried to push the bed further along, but it wouldn't budge. Master Kenobi, little will you ever know the dark side of the Force. You're a monster. I will stop you, no matter what. You're a fool to believe you can stop me. I don't need to stop you. I need to prove to my apprentice, who always had the best interests in mind. I will do what I must. Sidious raised his hands as Obi-Wan raised his. Electricity flew out of Sidious's hands as Kenobi used all of his might to stand between Sidious and Padme as he held his blade stiffly. Sidious moved forward as Obi-Wan focused on protecting Padme. Obi-Wan knew what could happen if Padme was harmed. If Obi-Wan didn't stop Sidious, it was completely possible that Sidious would ruin any chance for Anakin to be redeemed. Even more so, Obi-Wan was selfless. He put himself in the way of danger as he blocked the lightning back at Sidious as he used all of his strength as he took a step to the side as he moved Padme's bed behind him. Sidious ignited his blade as he and Obi-Wan clashed in the middle of the hallway. Obi-Wan needed help. He was so physically exhausted. Obi-Wan trusted the force to guide his motions as he swung back and forth, defending every strike he received from Sidious. Obi-Wan was almost no match for Sidious, but Sidious was too drained. He fought Windu and lost, and then he fought Yoda and barely beat him. Both Kenobi and Sidious were not at their max strengths, as two duelists tested the waters with one another. Obi-Wan knew he couldn't be too offensive with his attacks, because if he was, he would lose, and even more so, he wouldn't be able to protect Padme from the Dark Lord of the Sith. Obi-Wan was quick as his blade bounced back and forth. The Master of Form 3 went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the most powerful Sith seen in generations. 
Obi-Wan gave his all, as his scarred and burnt outfit moved as he shook the ash from Mustafar to the floor. Sidious's dark robes danced back and forth as Obi-Wan glided and matched blades with Sidious. Obi-Wan's speed and advantage was slipping as he began to struggle with the Dark Lord. Obi-Wan toiled as the Sith Lord jolted his blade forward as it connected with Obi-Wan's left shoulder. The blade pulled out as Obi-Wan struck at Sidious, cutting into the Sith Lord's robes. Obi-Wan held his hurt arm behind him as he put his other blade forward. Obi-Wan rested his hand next to Padme as Sidious raised his hands and shot lightning at Obi-Wan as he held his blade with all of his strength. As he watched Sidious get lifted from his feet, Obi-Wan fell back as the bed began to slip. Palpatine was the one holding the bed from moving. Sidious was being held off his feet as he looked into the eyes of Lord Vader. You'll never take her from me! Sidious's eyes were filled with shock as they looked onto Anakin Skywalker, equipped with metallic arms and legs, as he looked through his brow as he crushed Sidious's windpipe without giving him a moment to talk. Anakin pulled his lightsaber from Obi-Wan's belt as he cut the Sith Lord into half as he dropped the top half of him, still in his hands. Anakin looked over at Obi-Wan, who was still keeping his defensive stance. Anakin dropped Sidious and sheathed his lightsaber. Obi-Wan steadied himself away from Padme as he sheathed his lightsaber as well. He leaned against the wall and moved away so that Anakin could get to her. Anakin walked over, Padme was alive, and she was alright. Anakin smiled as he gently placed his hand on her forehead and brushed her hair away from her face. The Alderaan guard came back around after they heard the lack of noise. They began to search the area for more clones. Obi-Wan kneeled now next to Yoda as he checked on the Grand Master. He was alright, but... Then Obi-Wan heard a noise at the end of the hallway, as several Alderaan guards began to fall back, being shot at while they ran. Obi-Wan stood up as he ignited his blade once more and stepped forward. Anakin looked down at Padme as he tried to get her away from the clones. Anakin was in a different state of mind at this moment. His wife was okay and the Sith were dead. Bail Organa came around the corner as he looked at Anakin. There was a certain amount of fear in him, but he could see that Anakin had calmed down. He looked like his biggest concern was his wife as he looked at Bail. Anakin nodded as he turned around and ignited his lightsaber. Obi-Wan thought momentarily that he would die as he turned to see Anakin brush by him and the Alderaan guard as he pushed forward. Almost as if nothing had happened in the recent hours, it was like old times. Anakin pressed forward as he cut through some clone troopers. The Alderaan guard followed closely as Obi-Wan pulled up the rear. There were several clones in here. Not a massive group, but a couple hundred clones. Obi-Wan and Anakin were skilled enough, especially with the extra support, to deal with the clones. Anakin's greatest and only concern was protecting Padme. The two moved like there had been no conflict between them. They cut through the clone troopers as they cleaned up the house. But there was an issue. The Empire reported that there was a Jedi on Polis Masa. Not that Sidious thought he'd lose, but after the first wave of clones died, a distress single was sent out to the Empire. Obi-Wan and Anakin looked at each other when they realized what they needed to do, without having to say a single word about anything. They ordered the Alderaan guard to get the medical staff on board of the Tant of Four. Anakin and Obi-Wan ran in and got a hold of everyone they could before the Venator class Star Destroyers arrived to capture and or kill them. Anakin got to Bail and saw his children for the very first time. Anakin's heart melted as he held Leia. Obi-Wan grabbed Yoda off the ground as Anakin pushed Padme out of the complex. Bail began rounding up all the staff and anybody else they could muster as Obi-Wan held Luke and Yoda in his arms as they all made a great escape into the Tant of Four. The ship took off and got away from the system just as an Imperial fleet arrived. The Tant of Four jumped into hyperspace and escaped the system. Obi-Wan leaned against the wall in a hallway after he got Yoda, some care, and Luke to his parents. Obi-Wan was tired. He fought Anakin, saved him, and Padme, fought Sidious, and evacuated a facility within the span of a couple hours. Obi-Wan was completely spent. He leaned against the wall and dozed off. Yoda was in the back of the ship being taken care of by Bail and some other medical droids. The Tanta 4 was going to Alderaan. It would be a safe place away from the Empire. It would ensure that everyone inside could be saved. With the Galactic Empire's Emperor dead, the Senate would fall into chaos and systems set in place to wipe out the Jedi Order would crumble. While the clones still had their mandate, their Emperor was now dead and the Senate needed to pick up the pieces. Bail Organa would go to Coruscant to aid that effort. Even though he could be committed for treason against the Galactic Empire, there was no true power in the galaxy. There was no one with enough power to take control and influence the galaxy to bend it to their will. The Tantive Four would land on Alderaan and unload the crew 
the people, Anakin and his new family, and the two stowaway Jedi. Yoda on board of the ship was healed back to life, as he was able to make a swift recovery, enough of a recovery to be able to walk on his own by the time they got to Alderaan. On the planet, Padme was awoken, and she was happy to see Anakin, but she also understood the implications of what he had done. Obi-Wan and Yoda spoke privately before deciding that Anakin would have to live with his family and take care of his children without the Jedi. Anakin was on the right path, but since the Jedi didn't harbor revenge nor did they seek out others to inflict pain on, they let Anakin walk away without having to pay for the crimes against the Jedi. Anakin was so very obviously apologetic, but Anakin would be instructed by his wife, who was also going to Coruscant, to take the children to Naboo and begin raising them. Anakin was given a vessel to remove himself from Alderaan and go into hiding. Technically, Anakin was a hero of the former Republic because of his execution of the Separatist leaders on Mustafar. Anakin had a lot of work though. His torture would be the nightmares he'd have to live with after executing the Jedi and losing to Kenobi. While losing to Obi-Wan wasn't the worst thing that ever happened to him, Anakin would have a lot of trauma to unpack when it came to what he did at the Jedi Temple. Though, the time for Anakin to take his kids to Naboo would come, and the former Jedi Master and Apprentice would have to go their own separate ways. Anakin, I've always wanted you to be happy. I hope you can finally live the life that you've always deserved. Thank you, Master. I'm sorry for everything, and I, I want you to know that you were the best mentor anyone could have ever had. You are not to blame for the dishonor of the Council. You have a good heart, Anakin. You'll always be able to find me through the Force, just like Master Qui-Gon, in case you ever need guidance. May the Force be with you. Goodbye, my friend. Always remember, may the Force be with you. Anakin turned around while holding his son and daughter in his two metallic hands. He took them inside of a ship, and within minutes the starship was gone. Anakin was off to Padme's personal residence to begin raising Luke and Leia on Naboo. Obi-Wan and Yoda had to figure out what to do next. With the Empire forming without an Emperor, the Jedi had no chance at being able to return to a power in the galaxy, and there was no reason for them to go into exile with no Sidious around. As much as Bale and Padme tried, the Senate wouldn't budge on the Jedi issue. They'd refuse to allow the Jedi to return to power in the galaxy. The Jedi wouldn't get their temple back, and all Force users were allowed to exist, but they couldn't have an influence on the galaxy or any power in the galaxy. The Senate would revoke Order 66 because the Jedi didn't need to be hunted, just removed from power. Obi-Wan and Yoda would be forced to pick up the pieces of the Jedi Order as the Empire reformed back into a Republic. The Jedi would send out another message for the Jedi to gather on one of the moons of Yavin, and the Order would be reformed there. There would be a lingering evil still in the galaxy, but the Jedi Order would rebuild from the ground up in the ruins of the temples of Yavin 4. So many Jedi gathering on Yavin would be Padawans and Younglings. It showed to the extent that Masters and Knights would go to protect their students. On Naboo, Anakin would have a completion of his heart. Having two twins would be the heart and pride of his life. While the new metallic parts were hard to get used to, he took the role of father, really, naturally, and very happily. Padme would be able to spend time on Naboo with Anakin and their children often, though the two of them had a lot to work through, especially because of what Anakin did, because of his nightmares and everything else. Even more so, Anakin choked Padme, and that was kind of a disgruntlement in the relationship. There was a certain level of bond that was broken, especially since that wasn't a bedroom activity. As the months began to pass by, there was a criminal group in the Outer Rim, named the Crimson Dawn, picking up the power threshold of the criminal underworld. Though, with a new Chancellor, the Republic would have the Republic fleet to execute the criminal empire, especially because the Clone Wars were ever so slightly extended. The Republic was having issues with maintaining the peace, and the Grand Army of the Republic was kept around to assist with that peace. Though once Crimson Dawn was destroyed, Maul was released into the galaxy, where he would begin to hunt the Master of the Order, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan and Maul would have one final grand rematch, where they would duel each other to the death. Obi-Wan, who had been reaching new power levels since Mustafar, would be able to kill Maul easily, and put him into peace. Obi-Wan would bury Maul so that he would have a proper burial and a place to find peace in his own afterlife. Winning the Darksaber was a prize, but it wasn't an errand to partake in. Obi-Wan would dethrone Gar Saxon and help Mandalore establish a democracy. Obi-Wan would then secretly place the Darksaber inside of the tomb of Satine Kriz. 
so that her people could live in peace the way that she would have wanted it to be. Anakin would raise his children and teach them all about the ways of the Force. Padme and Anakin would find new love for one another as they raised their children. While the children of Skywalker grew into powerful Force users, their voices would have the most influence as they both became powerful politicians in Naboo's politics. The Jedi would rebuild their order and a new moral code for it where they would be able to find a true success in a galaxy founded on peace and justice for everyone. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our story. Again, special thanks to George Story, Benjamin Wells, Jay Hoffman, Warping 308, Icy Raptor Gord, and Chancellor Yu Lauren Sanders for supporting the channel. Let's hit 2,000 likes in this video so that we can see what if cities raised Anakin. If you want to see a what if, let me know down below. I do whatever comments, but I don't do crossovers. Check out the Twitch community Discord and Patreon if you want to be a part of our incredible community and swarming in other ways. And if you want to learn how to go and win a Sideshow Collectible, we are doing this for the month of July. Our goal is to hit 35,000 subscribers by the end of July. That is July 31st of 2022. That is 11.59. So if we hit it at 11.59, I'll do the giveaway. So what you do is go down below, you put your name on the dock. If if we don't hit that goal, then I won't do a giveaway. I'll come up with something new for the following month. Uh, but we're going to try and make a push for 35,000 subscribers that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So subscribe, share, and like the video, and leave comments down below. Leave all the what ifs you want down below. Like spam the hell out of it because we want to blow these videos up and we want to give away one of these shy show collectibles. They're they're really cool. Anyways, uh, let's talk about our story here. Our story is uh, definitely interesting and it's definitely one of the shorter stories I've done probably in months and it's not that I ran out of ideas but it's that the story doesn't inhibit a long story it's really not meant to be a long story and while I know that there's others who have done this story before I don't really care I haven't watched those stories and I don't really care that's the truth um, I'm telling the story that I want to tell and the story that I wanted to tell just happened to be uh, about 30 minutes long 35 minutes long and I know this is rather short for what I normally put out but the story just didn't inhibit something longer than that. You know, Palpatine dueling with Obi-Wan or losing to Anakin and whatnot, that, that, that's not, that's not going to take long. We're talking about maybe five hours of time right here until a big time jump at the end, right? So most of what's going on here happens in a five hour time period. Most of the theories that we do on this channel, most of the what ifs, they take a period of, of years, decades, they go on forever. And that's not this. And that's okay, because, you know, I wanted the story to feel full. I wanted it to feel like a part of the movie, you know. I wanted it to feel like you could watch Revenge of the Sith, see Obi-Wan go down there, and there's actually another 30 minutes of Revenge of the Sith that you've never seen before, right? And, of course, always at the end, I like setting it up. Um, I like setting up the end of the story so that you know that something happens in the grander scheme. How that happens, that's up for you to decide. But other, other than that, I think... I think people are going to have a little bit of a disagreement over Anakin's behavior towards Anakin. And I that's something I thought about a lot while writing the story. And it's it's a very much it's very much so this video is very much so a diagnosis of Anakin's character and finding out who he really is because we don't really get to see Anakin after Mustafar as Anakin. He goes from Anakin to Darth Vader. There's that little sliver of Anakin where he asks his Padme, all right, is she safe, is she okay? And Sidney says, no, you killed her. And Anakin, and Anakin turns to Vader, and that's that, you know? And that's what we see on the big screen. So, other than comics and, and books and all that stuff that some of you might read, and I, I don't read, um, you guys might have a disgruntlement with this. And that's something I always like to try and challenge with these videos, is the character within. Vader has always been a part of Anakin, as much as Anakin has always been a part of Vader, and you can't separate the two of them. But you have to identify the fact that Anakin is always, and I mean always, stronger than Vader. Vader might have more power, Vader might have that evil nature that's so overbearing, but in the end, it's always Anakin who wins. Because, you know, Anakin always shows, Anakin is always in there, and whether he would be pissed or not, I think him being so helpless and having Obi-Wan help him after being so helpless might find um, might find this actually relatively nice. Obviously, he would be very upset that Obi-Wan beat him like that, but in the end, I think it, Anakin would realize that he kind of messed up. That's something that we have to discuss, though, is, is post-Mustafar Anakin. We've never seen that, you know, and that's something that, that we don't know what happens, you know. Does Anakin come down and does he realize? Because we see that he has that moment on Mustafar, and I, I do apologize for the rant and, 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 and ranting, but I want to talk about the character and, and why I made 
characteristics for that character in the story. And I do believe that we see Anakin crying because he does feel bad for what he's done. He doesn't want to be a murdering psychopath. He doesn't. He just wants to save his wife. That's his only goal. He just wants to save Padme. That's really not that simple. It's, I want to protect this person I love, and I'm going to do anything I can to do that. And I think once he realizes that Obi-Wan is really on his side, I think he's going to be like, oh, well, I messed up. And and that's something that doesn't get explored too much in the story. But Anakin's going to have a lot of trauma to deal with when he's raising his kids. You know, he's going to have night terrors all the time. He's going to be thinking about what he did the children inside the temple. It's going to haunt him for the rest of his life. And honestly, that's something that I think could be a whole nother video. But I, I didn't think that was fitting for this video. I didn't think that was part of what this video needed to tell. Because the story was told of just Anakin understanding that the person that was really against him was not the person that he thought it was. Obi-Wan was never there to betray him. It was always Palpatine. Palpatine was always pulling the strings. And I think watching Obi-Wan defend Pal watching Obi-Wan defend Padme would not only show Anakin, but it would also make under make Anakin understand that Obi-Wan has always had his best interests in mind. And while that could be taken two ways of oh he's defending Padme for himself or or da 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 that's why at the end of that duel, at the end of Anakin killing uh, Palpatine, Obi-Wan gets out of the way. He immediately gets out of the way because he never wanted to get in the way of it. He never did. He just cared about Anakin's happiness, and that's who Obi-Wan is. He just did. Uh, so I always try to stay realistic. I hope you all enjoyed this, though. Um, special shout-out to the artist for making the art. Thank you so much. Um, I'm not going to be able to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. I think it's pronounced Nameka. You do a fantastic job with the art that you, you make on the channel, so thank you. Special shout-out to him, and special shout-out to our voice actor. I'm sorry, man. I'm still learning your voice as well, um, but special shout-out to um, our friend Jordan. Thank you for doing the voices on this video and the most recent video. Anyways, guys, I love you all. Spread the love, and remember, we're shooting 35k, so hit that subscribe button, and always remember, my friends, may the Force be with you.